Welcome to the video presentation of Bowman stromal inlay as a management option in keratoconus. Intraocular lens injector which is used to implant IOL in cataract surgery has also been used for other surgeries like aspirating and injecting desmid membrane roll in desmid membrane endothelial keratoplasty. Can the same injector be used for any other cornea surgery? Let's see. This 20-year-old boy with progressive keratoconus in right eye presented to us for consultation. He had undergone penetrating keratoplasty in left eye three years back elsewhere but was not happy with the outcome mainly due to high astigmatism and was looking for an options other than sutured corneal transplant in right eye. Tomography image of right eye showed features diagnostic of keratoconus. The cornea was steep with keratometry readings touching 65 diopters and pachymetry going below 300 microns. So what options we have for this young boy with progressive keratoconus? Collagen cross-linking for sub-300 microns cornea may not be an ideal procedure and patient didn't want to deal with sutures. Is there anything else that can be considered here? There has been a few publications on Bowman layer transplant in such cases from Dr. Mellis Group. Although the technique was shown to help in stabilization of keratoconus and some flattening of cornea as well over few years, it is technically very challenging and could not be adopted by many surgeons around the globe. We describe a simpler technique for performing Bowman layer transplant. The technique involves creating anterior 150 to 200 microns of donor cornea graft using femtosecond laser and transplanting it in an intrastromal pocket of recipient cornea. As this graft contains Bowman layer along with anterior stroma and is placed intrastromally, it was called Bowman stromal inlay. Surgical steps include creation of intrastromal pocket in recipient cornea, creation of Bowman stromal inlay from a donor graft and transplant of inlay into the stroma. For first two steps, femtosecond laser was used and for transplant, IUL injector was used. For creation of intrastromal pocket, femtosecond LASIK flap making software was used after making some changes. The energy of side cuts were reduced to minimum so that there are no side cuts and flap area gets converted into an intrastromal pocket. The width of the canal used to release air bubbles in LASIK flap is increased to 3 mm to engage IOL injector for placing the inlay. After docking, the pocket of required diameter that was around 9.5 mm was created. Femtosecond laser planning was done to create 200 microns and 8.3 mm diameter anterior stromal graft. The diameter used was calculated after assessing the size of cone and thickness was based on initial thickness of recipient cornea. Donor graft was mounted on artificial anterior chamber. Epithelium was removed using alcohol and limbus was marked with junction violet dye before creation of Bowman stromal inlay using femtosecond laser. The harvested inlay graft was stored on a Teflon block submerged into few drops of balanced salt solution. The patient was transferred into main operation room from refractive suit. The intrastromal pocket was opened using any blunt dissector. Now the inlay was loaded onto the injector with Bowman layer side up. 1 to 2 cc of balanced salt solution was injected into the intrastromal pocket. Tip of IOL injector was engaged at the canal and the inlay was slowly injected into the intrastromal pocket. 
द इनले वॉज अनफोल्डेड इन टू द इंट्रास्टोमल पॉकेट बाय मैनुपुलेशन यूजिंग विस्को कैनोला एंड सम टैप्स ऑन द सर्फेस द इनले वॉज प्लेस्ड इन टू डिजायर्ड पोजिशन थ्रू सर्फेस मसाज पोस्ट ऑपरेटिवली द इनले वॉज सीन नाइसली प्लेस इन द इंट्रास्टोमल पॉकेट विदाउट एनी फोल्ड और सेलर रिएक्शन There was subtle corneal edema due to edematous BS inlay in first week that settled within 3 to 4 weeks time. OCT showed well placed inlay in anterior stromal pocket. Serial tomography revealed increased in corneal pachymetry in accordance to the thickness of the inlay and stable sagittal and posterior elevation maps. The BS inlay may help in strengthening the biomechanics of keratoconic cornea by transplant of Bowman layer and anterior stroma. Future possibility of topo guided surface ablation to smoothen the topography may also be considered. Although long term follow up will tell us more about changes in keratoconus corneas after BS inlay, for the time being it is an easier technique for performing Bowman layer transplant that has already shown good results in stabilization of keratoconus patients thank you very much